Okay, well, we like to talk to interesting people here, and I have on the phone with me a, a very interesting artist. She works with glass, Anna Kearns. Hi, how's it going? Well, good, good. How are you today? I am doing great. Thank you so much for wanting to talk to me. I'm in the middle of three different projects, um, which is not all that unusual. I like to call it artistic ADD when you start <laughs> one project. There's a cure um, for that, you know. <laughs> I know, but it's far more fun when you're talking about glass and art just to run with it and see where it takes you. So I'm doing three different projects, one of which is a fused glass project where it's a celebration of us being in our new space. Um, one is a Lume glass project where I'm working over the torch, um, creating these lightweight, airy glass sculptures. And then the third one, I'm actually combining all of the above. Cool, cool. And you're over in the, uh, the design district in Dallas. Yes. Uh, so I actually just moved down. I'm a Dallas native, but just moved down from Chicago last October. What brought you back uh, to Dallas? You know, sometimes you just need to be a little closer to home. Plus... I don't know if you guys have been paying as attention as much as I have or all of a sudden I blinked and the Dallas scene and uh, with art has just been burgeoning. There are all kinds of collectives and art walks and the design district has really been booming since I left. So I realized that as much as I love Chicago, how much fun would it be to have more of a say and a voice in an arts community that I'm even more passionate about down here in Dallas because it's my hometown, it's where my roots are. Um, and most of my clients were already Dallas as well because I do both commission-based works as well as, you know, the stuff that's running around in my own head. Yeah, and then there was all the bullets flying back and forth in Chicago too, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, I mean, I will say my poor mom, she watches the news far more than I do. And so I was constantly getting calls. Are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> yes, mom. Yes, I live in a very safe part of town, although, I mean – you know, you figure God's in control. You never know, you know, what's going to happen. Back to the glass. What, what, what inspires you to a new creation? Where do your ideas come from? I realized a while ago that if you keep looking for the next big thing, and you may have experienced this as well in your life or in any big decision you're making, if you are trying to figure out what the next big idea is that you should do, you kind of get stuck you know what I mean? You get it takes on such a great weighty importance that you kind of lose yourself in it for fear of making the wrong choice. So I figured out actually uh, through a happy accident that if you just do a little something each day, if you're looking for little inspirations each day and following where that leads you, looking for just a tiny little inspiration each day will lead you to the bigger inspirations. It'll lead you to the big idea. So I didn't initially, for example, I didn't initially plan to go into glass. You came out I of kinda, a tragedy in your life, as I understand. Yes. I, um, my younger sister, she's four years younger. Um, and you know, you always want to protect your younger sister, your younger siblings, you know, when you're not trying to kill them you know, you're in protection mode. And my sister got this very rare form of cancer and battled it for six years. It was up and down and all around. And at the end of the day, she called it her heaven send off, planned her own funeral. And she, she was ready. She was ready to go and she was ready to be out of pain. Um, but it's still, I mean, it, it was hard. Um, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It was just awful. Uh, and you know, even now it's been 17 years. This is the first year that she has been gone longer than she was here since mm. because she was away. I'm sorry. Like, Pretty sorry. Thank you. Um, th that was a weird anniversary. It just passed. It was March 1st mm -hmm. and that weird anniversary to go through because it was such a weird feeling where, it was sad and then it was okay. And then it was sad again. I, it went back and forth, but what happened, uh, what helped me get through it this year, which is what happened when I was younger, I started taking a glass class. Um, I've always been artistic. I minored in it in college 
and wanted to do some continuing ed, but I was a private tutor uh, who I was working most weeknights, and that's when all of the fun continuing ed classes were. So when I was looking for a class, they had, you know, like knitting and scrapbooking, and then they had this fused class class that was during the day. And I thought, oh, this would be fun. I've always loved glass. Let's see what fused glass is like. And so I started this class, um, and it was, oh, it was just everything. It was easier than breathing in twice as fun. I was literally breaking glass. You use glass as um, a canvas. Hmm. So you have like a, you know, a normal flat piece of glass, and then you're breaking up different colored bits of glass and mosaicing them in a way to create your design on your glass canvas. And then it goes in a kiln um, for about a day and a half and slowly ramps up, fires and melts together, and then slowly ramps down. And the whole process of it was so healing. Mm. The way you dealt with your grief. It really was. It was cathartic, first of all, breaking glass. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, it, but also breaking glass to put it back together in a way mm. that was beautiful yeah. than it ever could have been before it was broken. It, it just was literally a picture of healing and it just fed my soul. And when it started, I just never stopped. Mm. That, that's that's actually good advice for anyone listening who may be going through grief, experiencing something like that, is to is to find something totally different outside yourself that you can focus on and it helps you to deal with that grief very much so and i really I, it doesn't have to be glass it doesn't have to be art although i i find great relief in ceramics and everything even if you're mm -hmm. not artistic yeah. but doing something with your hands where you can see a difference with what you've made that there's something that connects to your soul there's something that just helps you see that there's a difference that has happened. And also yeah. it becomes a tangible expression mm -hmm. of what's going on inside of you that, I mean, if you've ever experienced a loss, um, sometimes it's beyond words. Right. By sometimes I mean more than half the time. You know, people are wanting to know how you're doing and what's going on and like, how are you feeling? And there are just a lot of times you're so busy working on coping and getting out of bed mm -hmm. that aren't words. There's there's no mind space left to create words around what it is that you are feeling and dealing with. Yeah, to turn your, your grief into something beautiful and share that with other people. Where, where can people see your art? I know you have a website. I do. I have a website. It's AnnaLouGlass.com. My middle name is Louise. So it's A-N-N-A-L-O-U-Glass.com. But I also, since moving back to town, have joined up with a couple of other artists and just opened a Anna Lou Glass Collective studio on Dragon Street in the Design District. I'm so excited. Well, great. It, great. Good luck with it. Thank you so much. We are going to have open hours on Thursday. You're welcome to come in. Or you can get in touch with me through my website. I also love scheduling things by appointment, too, where you okay. can come in. We can chat, especially if you have ideas about commission, you have questions about the process, or you just want to see what it is we're in the process of making. We'd love to have you. Hey, well, so enjoyed talking with you. Thanks for, for sharing your thoughts about your glass artwork and also about the grief and the way you handled it. Good, good advice for our listeners. Thank you so much for having me. I feel privileged and honored to share my story, and I just hope that it helps somebody out there. Because the art is so important and grief is tricky enough as it is. There is hope, and I promise you it does get better. Thank you, Anna. You're welcome. Check out Anna at AnnaLouGlass.com. John Butler. 95.